No, I mean the. Well, we're back. We're How back. How we doing? Another Welcome happy in. hour. Yeah. Oh, well, excited about it. Today is. Uh, are you? Ta- did you tag me in there? I did. Okay. Well, you already tagged in there. Okay. Good. So, good. Uh, Let's go live here. Let's check in on this. All right. It's March Madness. We got the uh, NCAA basketball tournament kicked off. Your team's not there, though. Man, man, my team is... It's even worse. My team today actually lost our best player. Left forgoes, Still? Forgoes his last two years to um, to get into the NBA. Well, hey, my, te- hey, my team's in. Terrible year. Tomorrow, the Auburn Tigers are, are in. Big time. Alabama plays tonight, right? So, man, I'm telling uh, you, it's exciting. I did, I did get a chance to sneak at the first game and uh, watch a little bit of it. Man, I just love the spirit and the passion. And the excitement that these kids have, and just it, it, the do or die situation, um, you know, it's just, it's exciting. It is, yeah. and that's why Vegas is so exciting. If you've never been during uh, the NCAA tournament, most exciting time because guess what? Out there, it's never over. Man, they got they, big shots. They had this one kid on on Rhode Island, just hit, Rhode Island hitting big shots. Rhode Island small school playing over. Hey, Cassie. It was fun. Hey, Cassie, how you doing? Uh, but that's that's like our business, right? Do or die. Do or die. Well, I almost died yesterday. I was coming back. You know, I was uh, with some of the best real estate minds out in Whistler, at Whistler in British Columbia, out at, near Vancouver over you're the a, last coming days. You were in a Boo year? Vegas. They have wine in Vegas, Jenny. So you'll be all right. Um, boo Vegas. Yeah. How can you boo hey, Vegas? Hey, Jenny. Good to see you um, here. Don't hey, Rain. Vegas. Anyway, anyway, get this though. Going through immigration, what do you call it? Immigration, customs, all that. I think right? you call it customs. I've been through. What, I've been through uh, Mexico. I've been through. I mean, like crazy countries, right? Well, if you're from there, it's not crazy. But coming through Canada, and all of a sudden, all these little things go off, and they go, "Hey, sir, you've been randomly selected." I say, "Hey, hey, we winner, winner," and he goes, "No, no, no." It's a blue light special. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, did I get it. I, they have places that I didn't know existed. Look, have you search? I thought it was going to happen. They they literally take me to this like area. Oh, and Mark Carlisle, I'm a business partner. He he's not allowed in there, so that tells you something. I'm sitting there going, "Oh lord!" <laughs> and when you go in there, I noticed they had rubber gloves. I'm about to get violated. I'm about to get rubber gloves and a room for inspection. I thought, "Oh lord, we are in trouble." Because I mean, like, I mean, like, I've I haven't done anything. Yeah. And they're going to do that to me. But luckily we went left, and I had to go sit in a room, and they, they interrogated me, asking me, why in the world would you come here for real estate, sir? You know, and all that stuff. And so after about 20 minutes of being hassled and being told that, uh, don't I care about terrorism and everything, uh, they had to interrogate this guy. Goodness. Hey, but you, did you tell them you were in a yurt? I was in a yurt. For goodness sake. I was. I had dinner house. in a yurt. I was sleeping in a yurt, so how can you detain me? Uh, that's right. Uh, but yeah. and plus, I was liking them. By the way, I have never, honest to gosh, uh, you notice I didn't say God, whatever, because that would be bad. That's true. Uh, uh, never seen more Chinese that are buying real estate in any one area. I mean, I'm telling you, we went to the mall one day when we were still in Vancouver. There was literally 15 restaurants in the food court. Only four were American type foods, uh, oh, wow. like Chick Fil A or anything like that. 11 were Asian. It's just fascinating because what they said is happening is all this these, this Chinese money is rolling over to British Columbia. These I said, what do they do for a living? They said they don't do anything. I said, what a life. What, do they just sit on their money and watch it grow? Yeah, well, they send a kid over there. I guess they just have it. Uh, it's crazy, but uh, Jeez. that was crazy. Uh, well, here's the happy hour. Oh, absolutely. Hey, got, where's my... Got a land shark. It's a twisty. Oh, it's a twisty. There you go. Oh, easy. There it so is. we got a land shark. A, there it is. I got the Brinks truck of uh, koozies back again. Absolutely. Julie May in the house. So hello, Julie. Uh, so what do we got next? Well, I, I tell you, hey. I don't believe this next topic. Well, you're talking about the, the first one we, that I skipped? Yeah. Man, didn't want to talk about it, but we got to talk about it because it, it's, it's the talk of all of our clients uh, and everybody that's been talking to us, and it's about the walkouts lately, huh? Yeah. Well, yes, uh, absolutely. We did skip over that. So the um, this is a big a big deal <clears throat> with these the gun protest walkouts. Um, you know, and I thought about it all day trying to figure out exactly how to say this because you got to be really careful around this topic. Um, when I her first heard about it was a couple of nights ago, and um, I, I actually got very upset about it. And mm. um, I just don't feel like that our schools are the place. For protests, um, you know, 
and what I'm thinking is like, if I got up and walked out right now, if I walked out of the show, that'd be rude, right? Disrespectful. It'd be disrespectful to me and if I John got up, McMillan. If I got up and walked out of dinner, if I got up and walked out of a movie, if I got up and walked out of a meeting, right? Yeah, it would be rude and disrespectful. And I think absolutely uh, the way I see it is hey, that Megan. we are being rude and disrespectful in order to be seen and get attention. And Absolutely. then we want to speak our mind. But now, now we're kind of pressing this on our young people who I really don't think understand all of the, the aspects or all of the issues uh, that are going on. And you're dealing with it because you have a son that is in a school that had some fairly active uh, talk that they were going to do something. Yeah, matter of fact, um, let's see. So this was, this was yesterday. So Tuesday they actually had a... Um, a program where they brought the kids into the uh, the cafeteria, I'm sorry, the gym, and did honor the victims of the Florida shooting. Yeah, fair enough. They did that on uh, Tuesday. So Wednesday was supposed to be the walkout. Um, in, uh, but he said about 30 kids walked out. Yeah. And stood out in, in the courtyard. Now, it, and that's at Spain Park High School. Um, good at, high school. If you're not from our area, that's, that's one of our yeah, great high school. good high schools. Uh, at Barry Middle School, the middle school that feeds into Spain Park, they had uh, three sixth graders tried to walk out. Let me just be honest with you. If I was in sixth grade now and I heard you can get out early, it wouldn't matter the issue, right? But see, that's but this, the problem. But this is the problem. I mean, you've got sixth graders. And you're asking them how trying you Trying to walk yeah. out of school. This is what we're doing. So uh, they, they they got in school suspension by the way because the it's not going to be tolerated at the middle school. I'm shocked. Um, I just I just think it's it's the wrong message that we're sending. I think we're disrespecting an American institution, which is school. My kids go there to learn and study. There are rules. They are supposed to be following the rules, and we're not. It, where does this end? So we give them the break now to say, okay, so you're upset about this. You want to protest gun control, so you can walk out today. So then. What happens next month or what happens next year when they get upset about something else? We've, right. we've given them opportunity. This happened in the NFL. I'm not going to go into that any, you know, too deep, but you disrespected an American institution there. It turned into a mess, and, and this is what's happening again in the schools, and it's, it's sad. It's crazy. I mean, it really is that, that, that they're taking and forcing upon everybody. And, and the other thing I think that I've taken away from all this thing is the amount of adults that the, the adults are creating these protest type movements right and forcing it on these kids yes. because the kids don't know better yeah and i want to add i did see something one thing on facebook i saw was uh at one school that had seven each each student had to get 17 post-it notes for each of the victims and they actually had to write something nice on there oh, that's awesome and spread those around to 14 students and three teachers each 14 and three each so they're actually spreading joy and love which i think is one of the problems. There's a, I mean, kids can be mean, right? In school, uh, no. There's bullying. That's always been a big problem, and I think that's where some of this anger and frustration, hostility, and violence comes from in in some of these kids. I don't have any answers, but I know that disrupting the school and and getting my kid involved in a protest is not going to go over well. No, no, he'd rather play basketball, right? And I'd rather talk about real estate. Yes. Yeah, so moving on. Yeah, moving on. Well, we're going to talk about this. One of the interesting things that came out recently was the savings rates of millennials for retirement, right? And yeah. how, what did you find? Yeah, it's it's interesting. You know, I, I looked this up, or and I saw it. Hey, I Melanie, there's an article on uh, on CNBC was that roughly forty percent of millennials do not have access to a four hundred one k. How many was that? Forty percent. Forty do not have access to it, and of the rest of them that do, only fifty percent participate. So we have less than half that have the ability to be in a 401k. Yes, and half of those are not participating. And did they talk about at all why that they weren't participating in the 401k? Is it just they want more money in their pocket right now? No, they, they didn't really address that. I think it was more of just the fact that they're not participating and they're not doing anything to build that retirement savings. So I got to thinking about it and it's interesting that, you know, it, just a tip, to, just to double your income, Let's say right now you're making fifty thousand dollars, and I'm just using that for a nice round number. If you save ten percent of that income, let's say you're twenty five years old, save that, and then for thirty years hold on to it at an average rate of return of like six six to eight percent, that will be fifty thousand dollars in thirty years. So you could take your income at twenty five, 
Take 10% of it, save it, and have that much when you're 55. Do that every year, and you're just it's packing compounding. on. Yeah, you're packing on money and income, so you're making, you're basically doubling your income. You're making it in tw- at 25, then you're kicking it out well, to your future at 55. Well, and I think some of the problem has been is that I think that our parents' generation was taught well by their generation before them that went through the Great Depression and those type things, and so our parents weren't as good, maybe. I think they thought it would naturally flow down. And the question, big question for you and I's generation is, are we going to set those habits early and often? Yeah, and I think I think it is a big deal. I think, um, you know, I think that this generation is going through a lot of learning, and one of them would be uh, debt, credit cards, right? A lot of us, our easy age, access. Our age got in trouble with them. Huh. So, what's one of the first things? But I got a free T-shirt, on? by the way. That's, I got a free that's T-shirt. True. That's true. So, so at, at every college campus, you got the free T-shirt, and uh, but that's Absolutely. one of the things that we'll pass on to our kids because it burned us. So hopefully. We can pass those kind of, those kind of. Now you got a college student, so what, what? Give us. I mean, talk to us about some of the. What has been your talk with with Taylor, your daughter? Well, actually, I'm trying to encourage her to get a credit card just to build credit. Absolutely, especially females, right? Yes. Because a lot of times we see it where we have these young buyers that are female, dad. They were always on dad's credit card or somebody like that, and they they graduate. They are more responsible than the guys usually. But they don't have any credit. Yeah, the funny thing is, in married couples, I always see that the female usually has the higher credit score. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm I'm encouraging her to get a credit card and go ahead and start building that credit to kind of work with that and learn about it and and kind of use those rule of thumbs of the, your 20 to 30 uh, percent uh, balance to your limit to kind of build that credit. Now, score are up. you monitoring that limit and trying to now make? We sure? ha- yeah, we. She has not gone through and, and got it. She's still. Uh, I'm not sure if you have to be 18 or 19 to, yeah. to do that. But they, but they are really good, by the way. If you're going to get a credit card, they you, their access is actually easier in college to get it than it is right after they graduate. Right? Yes. They, yeah, they want to give them away in college. Uh, At least they did to me. Now, because I think this is interesting, is what, what also is the discussion now as, you know, I guess it's kind of the transition to freedom, if you will. Are you having any discussions with her about savings and in, in investing and those type of things? Yeah, you know, I've tried to I've tried to get her a little bit involved in in stocks. I've you know I bought her a couple of stocks and just trying to pique her interest there. So, You're trying to let her monitor them. Yeah, I'm just trying to trying to get her a little bit excited about it because you know I come to find out a lot of people uh, don't get quite as excited as I do about them. So you know you kind of have to figure out how to work your way in there. Well, you do, but it's an important thing, and I think some of it is uh, financial literacy, right? We, we it's it's never sexy. Right, it is sexy if the bottom line's good. Yeah, uh, if you're making a bunch of money. If you're making a bunch sexy. of money, but when you're starting off and you're living on peanuts and living yeah. on love, and you're when you first get married. Yeah, if you're trying to if you're trying to just you know save away money for thirty years, it's not sexy. That is n- nobody nobody is getting excited about the idea of of let, letting money sit around for thirty yeah. years. Villanova is going to win it all, Mitchell. Mitchell Miller, I've got Virginia. I'm I, not sure I like about her. their final yeah. four. To be honest with you, I filled out my bracket really quickly. Villanova. Yes. Uh, Villanova, let's see. And then there's going to be a throw in there. Tennessee's going to be good. Tennessee is going to throw some haymakers in this thing, probably. Yeah. yeah. What a job that Rick fun. Barnes has done there. I mean, I thought Bruce Pearl under it, but after seeing the end of the year, uh, uh, Bruce Pearl can't hold a candle, uh, at least in the end of the year. Yeah, they're Rick doing Barnes. well. They're doing really well. Very strong. Uh, Mitchell, who you got? UAB? Uh <laughs> Yeah, Man. it's funny. I'm in a I'm in a bracket with some family, and they're big time Auburn fans. And who do you think they got winning it? That is that is ridiculous. Auburn. Yeah, but hey, yeah, oh, well. loyalty, loyalty. What? Hey, Karen and Sheila Freeman Palnall. How yeah. you doing? Good to see you on there. That's she's got an Auburn Blake tiger Wilson in the Hunt. family. Very doing? pretty daughter they have. Um, yes. Now let's uh, one more thing on that. Now. Um, Talk about are they are, are there classes that she's taking? Because I know she's in theater and all that. No. Because I'm really interested. In anything in finance? No, it's funny. Actually, my my ninth grader is taking a class in finance this year, and I actually looked at at some of the stuff and and you know some of the stuff they're learning there and teaching is pretty good. It's pretty cool. Well, I mean, you're, I, I'm just glad to see it at any level in in high school. Hey Jay. Hey Jay. Uh, one of the best things you're doing is your son's teaching you how to flip, not houses, sneakers. That's true. That's a true story. Honest to gosh, I mean, yeah, he's he has, flipping sneakers. Yeah, he's figured out how to get in, uh, 
in the know on when these high dollar, high uh, demand shoes are coming out. Limited supply, so he can buy us a pair and then resell them and make some money. It's, Is it, it's uh, awesome. are you, Certainly you're charging him a fee and teaching him the real world about distributorship. Well, uh, yes. Uh, so Daddy gets a I, little something? I, I'm actually excited about it. I, I, I like it. So you need like get on any, the action? Any interest you know, that he's showing and stuff like that is... Is very cool, and you know, went to set up a bank account and got his own debit card and all that good stuff. So <laughs> that's young. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for all true. that. Yeah, he had to actually go get a state ID to open Hold up on. a bank account. So th this is the one that you get like when you're a complete alcoholic and can't drive ever. <laughs> yes. And you yeah. say you took your son. Yes, yeah. that's him. Yeah. Gotcha. But that's what we had to do. It's a fun. Absolutely. So moving on. Uh, what we, got next? we have three things. I want to talk about three things that you can add to your house. If you're flipping, if you're selling, no matter what it is, to give it an updated feel without breaking the bank. Because oftentimes, folks are so worried about money. Oh, I don't have any money to fix it up. But a lot of times, it's, you just got to give that emotional push to, for somebody to go, oh my gosh, this is, cause it, it, this is updated. And, you know, these things that uh, people just want to have that feel that at least there's been some effort put into updating it. Yeah, it really is funny that when people can walk into houses, buyers can walk into houses and and see things that that you may not necessarily automatically connect with, but they connect with it at such a high level that they already see themselves living there. It, it's a crazy thing that your brain does and connect into certain things that you really like. It is, and, and, and two, you got to worry about the generational gap, right? Yes. Uh, even you and I, unfortunately, are now. I mean, I got a call the other day from uh, one of my good friends, Judd Stanford, who who calls and says, "Hey, uh, my niece." is looking to sell her house. I said, niece, how don't we? Makes you feel I, I'm old, not buddy. that old. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody my age has a niece that's old enough that's to buy a house. No, to sell, sell a it. house. Yeah. That's even worse. Even better, huh? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, hey, Peter, uh, that's one of my friends over in Malaysia. Uh, oh, good, good. Good guy over there in uh, Kuala Lumpur. So, Peter, good to see you. Um, anyway, number one, Nest thermostats, or if you're cheaper you can get the generic hey i actually got a nest you bought the real deal yeah got the real deal matter of fact this was another business idea that i had for my son but oh well the nest thermostat gives that th th this new generation of millennials uh we talk about the millennials a lot uh really anybody under 40 finds it cool everybody above that kind of sometimes gets nervous they're not gonna be able to control the thermostat yeah well, I, I, yeah, one of the things I think I really like about it is the ability to control the temperature at different times of the day when you're gone uh, and you don't need the air running all day. But or the it's actually all day. smart, though, right? And so yes. it, yeah. it, and it can do that. It can learn when you're there or not. Uh, and you can control it from your phone. It's very cool things you can do with it that. It gives that feeling of, oh my gosh, this is a high tech home. And for, you know, three, four hundred dollars, you know, you're out there. In fact, you can probably get them a generation old and be just fine. Yeah, one of the funny things that I liked about it was when you walk. Like when you walk up close on it, it'll it, it the display comes on. S uh, simple that's wild. Things. Simple. Anything things to me. turn you on, simple. right? Doesn't okay. take much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, number two, updated light fixtures, and this is one that we talk a lot of our sellers about. Is especially when we're trying to get the brass out, is that really they they can go and get builder grade. The builder grade is actually really good now. And two, how often are you up there? We're not talking the chandelier or anything like that. We're talking the general lights in your hallway, a lot of the flush mount lights, and that's what we really uh, are talking about. Are these? Uh, well, they look like half of a boob. Okay. Right. That's yeah. what a flush mount looks like. Okay. And all white. They come in a two pack. And they run about twenty dollars. Come on, for a hundred dollars you could have what ten lights? Yeah, and these are just just to replace uh, just to replace the brass or something like it, yeah. or you know, just something gives it all. In fact, I mean, it's okay for them to blend too. Uh, again, the finish is not all that great, but no one's ever going to be up there scraping it and touching it. Yeah. So, real important there. And then, lastly, I think it's a big one. Jay Williams, if you're listening, put it in all your new construction houses. Uh, and that is USB plugs with the regular uh, three-prong grounded yeah, that would be plug, good. Yeah. right? Because there's not one person that's under 60, I would say, that doesn't have a nightly need or a need in the kitchen to be able to plug in. Yeah, we got a ton of stuff now that plugs in and powers off a USB. 
uh, your phones, your iPads, your um, even things that are educational for the school because don't they bring their iPads? Yeah. And but even, even, and even uh, like your your wireless speakers, a lot of people have those. Oh, I didn't think music. about that. Um, so, so uh, those go off. I, I didn't know they they yeah, go off. That. A lot of things could could USB and, and, and they're not, charge. They're not yeah. that much more expensive. So uh, Jay, Jay, he's a new home builder. Uh, we want to see him in every house. That's right. Uh, so those are three things that you can do barely inexpensively, and I would put the USB plugs. Every kid's going to need it, and in the master bedroom, probably in the kitchen, because a lot of folks I know, I know Karen Charles, if she's still watching, they they do a thing where they put all their electronics in the kitchen, well, except for her husband who puts it in his closet. But he's he'll he'll come out of the closet one day. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, he is as he's he's from West Virginia, so he, yeah. he's all right. Well, I think I think the Nest thermostats are, are are a very cool thing. Anything you can put in the house that that you can control uh, from your your cell phone is is very cool. It, just an added feature, and it does save you money. Those thermostats do save you money by um, it's throttling by not using uh, energy as much. And, it's not and fun for kids. Turn it on and off. Look at that. Jay Williams been doing that for a couple of years. So. <laughs> So there you go, Paul. Oh, man. He'll give He's you, high tech. He'll give you credit for a couple for the last couple of years. Absolutely. Now, but that y- stuff, y- you know, I, I like the ring uh, oh, the ring. camera, yes. too. Are you doing the ring, Jay? Uh, uh, doorbells, uh, that's getting big now that we talked about last yeah. week. Amazon buying them. I mean, who doesn't want the UPS man coming into their house? Yeah, exactly. It's the milkman of today. Of course. The milkman. Hey Todd. Well, that's awesome. Well, man, next next up, um, yeah. Listen, I, I love working with first time homebuyers. By the way, we went through the rundown as we as we prep for the show. Yeah. Y'all heard it when I heard it. I didn't know what the heck FTHB was. I just figured, which I guess is first time homebuyers. Is that first right? time homebuyers. Yes. So that's FTHB. Is all brass is bad? It's making a comeback. Uh, is it really, Karen? If, if brass is making a comeback, I guess my mother will be happy. But um, I'm excited about it. Karen keeps the pulse because she's Miss Pinterest, and uh, that's true. She likes all that cute stuff. Well, listen, what I, I, I did want to bring up, you know, the first time home buyers. Okay, I really like working with them because they um, they want advice and they want a trusted professional to work with, and they appreciate what you're doing. You know, a lot of people call in and they just want. Uh, rates and fees. They try to boil this business down to just a rate and a fee, which I can understand that and it's easy to do and there's some, uh, there are some easy loans that you can do on your own and maybe you can find an app on your phone to do by yourself. But most loans are going to require some attention and care. Um, and, are you and, talking about rocket mortgage and stuff like yeah. that? Oh. And the problem with the mortgage business is by the time you realize you're at the wrong place, or that somebody has screwed up, it's way too late. Well, rocket. Well, let me just say the the, the the mortgage that's on a rocket. Very few people we've talked about it before. Very few people qualify to meet those terms, and they don't tell you till you're down the road with them. And most of the people, at some point, I know I saw a stat uh, that they will run into human contact. They will request it because they they you know it's kind of like that automated phone, right? You well, get tired of the. Well, my favorite thing that we get, we have a, and I don't mean to digress because I'm real interested in what you're saying, obviously because I'm interrupting you, but I really am. Uh, but don't is, walk out, though. Don't walk out. But the, these chat bots yeah. that are on thing, I get a kick out of uh, how many times on ours, we use actually live people, uh-huh. how many times on our transcripts we see that starts with, are you real? Are you a robot? <laughs> and so they'll start asking crazy questions like, who's the president of the United States and all that. It, it's amazing because the artificial intelligence, the AI, yeah. on these things, is they're smarter than some people. Oh, that's easy. Yes. Uh, I, I saw some well, posts yeah. on Facebook. that. Uh, anyway, uh, we digress. But, but anyway, so, so there's just some, some questions that first-time homebuyers, I was talking to some this week, and they, you know, they had a lot of questions for me, and I was like, man, you guys are really quizzing me. I appreciate it. This is great. And you know a lot of the stuff. Uh, I just wanted to answer some of the questions that first-time home buyers might have. Like number one, what is the escrow account? Right. So your escrow account is just a simple thing to set up to pay your taxes and insurance. The most lenders require you to have this if you put less than twenty percent down because the uh, the lender wants to make sure the property taxes are paid because a tax lien will trump a mortgage. And uh, in, in when things get paid off, and they don't want to get trumped. No, and the, yeah, it'll be huge. And uh, 
And the homeowner's insurance is obviously important because that protects the asset that they just lend a bunch of, a bunch of money on. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So Wait, that's, so that's where that is. It's a, it's a portion of your payment every, every month. It's kind of a, a savings account of your money that the, the lender holds to pay those when they come due. What's, what's Mitchell what's saying? Mitchell, he, he created his own uh, bot, essentially, to manage his own bank account. That's oh, when that's you know great. you're... Uh, let me just tell you one thing. This will, David Arnett will never have his own bot. No. <laughs> Mitchell, we need to talk. Yeah. We could... You can adopt a bot. Yeah, we could, we could use a, a bot for things. Um, another question is, where does the earnest money go? So typically, you're right, what is it, at 1% usually? Well, we've really, I mean, here's the problem with earnest money in Alabama, is that it's governed under separate law from real estate law. And it, it's tied in there, but it's not a, under any, uh, it's not directly within the real estate code. Because of that, it's so hard for a seller to collect on it, We've generally been writing five hundred thousand uh, dollars because what happens is we see people when they do sue, they're suing each other, and if if it's low enough, neither one of them are going to play around, and, yeah. and I, I just don't think it's worth it. Yeah, so so it's five hundred to a thousand dollars standard. It might be a little bit more. I've yeah, seen some of these agents more. But. I've seen five thousand, but that will get credited back at closing to the cash you're required to bring to closing. So mm-hmm. it's coming right back to you. Um, it's just kind of a good faith that you just send with the contract. Uh, what costs up front? Uh, typically, you're looking at the home inspection. is really the only cost that you're looking at out of pocket up front before we get the process started. Most of the other fees, the appraisal, uh, all the lender fees, attorney title, things like that, are all handled at closing um, and, and paid for there. So the, the home inspection is usually, what, $350, $400? Yeah, getting a little more expensive. Where have you been? Four fifty. Hey, four hundred. No, no, they're really three fifty. They're they're inching up, but okay, yeah, everything's everything's inching up. Inflation. Right? Um, can I put less than twenty percent down? Of course, there are definitely options for less than twenty percent down. We have conventional loans at three to five percent down. Mm-hmm. FHA at three and a half percent down. A couple of loans at zero percent down. I don't um, like the zero percent loans. I think it sets you off on the wrong course. So there's definitely options at less than twenty percent though. Uh, it was good. Will my loan be sold? Now this is a confusing thing. Now, when we sell the loans, it's only we're only selling the, the servicing rights. So that's just who you make your payment to. They take the payment, they divvy it up between principal and interest. They pay the taxes and insurance. Uh, they manage it and harass you if you don't make the payment. Things like that. Your the terms of your loan do not change, even if your loan is sold or the transfer. Or the now l- let me ask you this: the, one of the things that I, I read one time was that roughly there are about ten, other than these smaller banks that may hold what we call portfolio of the loan. Generally speaking, on these federal loans, there's about ten banks in the entire country that actually hold these notes. Right? Would that yeah. be about right? Yeah. So the chances of you getting it sold, the servicing rights, if you will, is very high. Yeah, and I know. I know. Leading up to the uh, the meltdown, uh, when a lot of things were going on in the mortgage industry, loans were sold three and four times a year, and and people would constantly get notices. And my loan's been transferred here. My loan's been transferred here. Here's where you make the payment. Do this. Do that. And so people were getting a little concerned, a little frustrated with that. That doesn't happen as much anymore. But a lot of loans do get sold to get originated. Still. Well, and, and usually the lender will be able to take. You, you know, funny story. I remember calling you. Uh, you did my loan back in 2011, and it and it got sold to a. Now, first of all, I want to. I have bank accounts at BB and T. I knew that, but I never knew its real name. And I called David and said, "You have sold my loan to something called Branch Banking and Trust Company. <laughs> Who would call themselves Branch Banking? And where in the world are they located? BB and T. Yeah, yeah. I never bothered. To, I just thought it was BB and T. See that." Uh, but anyway, what a crazy name, huh? Simple things, right? Yeah, simple things. Back but, to simple but things. But really, you can. The one thing, the other thing I'll say is that, you know, you get to a certain part of the year and you need to have some questions about the mortgage, even though it's shipped off to BBT. Call the mortgage originator uh, and ask them the questions because sometimes they can either answer the question or be a good go between. Yeah, usually, usually I can help you figure out the answer either quicker get, than you can get the answer or help you figure it out. Yeah. And, and, and I'm all usually a lot easier to reach than you know calling the number on your mortgage statement. So um, definitely, I tell a lot of people that even if your loan is sold, you can still refer back to me and, and contact me to get answers. Absolutely. I mean, it, I, don't go outside. It's too confusing. And quite frankly, you're going to get a, a somebody in a call center who doesn't know anything. 
because right. it's not in the script. Yeah. Right? And sometimes, actually, I've seen misinformation being given. Yeah. Right? Oh, well, no, we paid your taxes already. It's uh, it's October 2nd. Well, chances are not good they sold your, they have paid your taxes. Chances are good they're going to be sold, on, I mean, paid in December. Yeah, and the biggest the biggest concern that, that these people had was, are there any changes to my loan um, if it's sold? And no. The, the interest rate, the term, the payoff, all that stuff is the same. Uh, typically, the only thing that's going to change in your mortgage payment is going to be the tax and insurance. If you have a lot of claims against your uh, uh, home, your homeowner's insurance, then that's that has nothing to do with you, right? And then that's all the insurance. And your, your property taxes could go up as well. So those items that make up your mortgage payment. Could Super change. fan Josh from Mobile there Super Lawyer has made it. Now we can start. Now we can start. All hey. right, good. So uh, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> we're starting. Uh, starting Josh, over. you're late. Uh, the, if you're in Mobile, go to him if you get arrested. And the last, the last question I had was, uh, was the, uh, do the Fed moves affect my rate? So no, after we lock your rate in, we lock that in when we have a contract, property address, a borrower obviously, and a closing date. Uh, once we lock that in, close your loan, your rates, it, it's the 30 year fixed. We don't do a whole lot of adjustable rate mortgages right now. Um, that would be different on an adjustable rate mortgage, but, uh, a 30 year fixed is going he can handle to be, the bad stuff to be the so, same so yeah if you've done anything bad call him we got Corey Smitherman and Rachel Kelly in here too so hey one thing I was going to ask next? Well, hold on I, I don't want to move on oh, from yeah, that okay. yet uh, talk about you know the dilemma that that we're seeing a lot of folks in of how much that they put down because there are kinds that we talk about where let's say they can't put 20% down we want to you generally tell everybody put five in, save the difference, and pay down the note. Maybe if you want to a little bit faster. Yes. Uh, so let's say you've got twenty percent available, but that's all the money that you have. I would probably recommend not putting it all into your house because you know, like we like we talked about before, you don't have access to four hundred one ks, or a lot of people don't. Um, a lot of people aren't saving enough money for retirement. So why don't we put down a lower down payment? You can still afford the monthly payment and keep the house and. Put some money into retirement. Put some money away for savings. Put uh, start an emergency fund or something. Or actually, just yeah, manage right. your cash better instead of the, just throwing everything in. I mean, we've definitely got options at five, ten, fifteen percent down. But I think too, one thing I'll tell you is never, ever, and I mean never, ever, ever, uh, ever never. do the life insurance for mortgages. Like when they come, you're about a week after you get there. Kevin Barker, the pride of Georgia. Uh, how are you? Uh, so I was talking about you today and your old, uh, I won't use the word, it's three letters and you had a judge, uh, you know, it might have something to do with the Second Amendment, but Kevin had one that was stolen. All right. Yep. At one point. It was called the judge, but anyway. Um, what was I saying? Um, not sure. We were talking yeah. about interest rates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when all these people come in and they, and oh, they no, make, we're talking about down payments. I'm sorry. Putting down less. So yeah. if we had, you know, if you had... Kevin just does cash, that to me. Yeah. Throw your right off. Yeah, yeah. Throw your right off. But, but the point of the story is that, um, you know, to put... Sometimes we could put down less, save some of that money so it's not all sitting in the walls of your house, and financially you'll be better off. Well, and I know what I was going to tell you, is that I think so many young people... We were talking about millennials earlier. The likelihood of them needing to use life insurance... They need to be investing in making sure at least their employer is covering them for short-term and long-term disability. Because I've seen so many people, uh, my legal advice to y'all is to take a shot right now. Okay. Take a shot? We don't have shots. We'll, well drink a beer. Okay. on him. I mean, uh, voluntarily. Uh, he's legal advice. He is an attorney. Yeah, he is. Um, so I guess that no, counts. But, but disability. You need to make sure that if you... <laughs> Because you're more likely to just to have a, a more permanent type injury where you have seizures, those type of things. And I can't tell you enough is that you don't want to get in a pickle and not be able to be employed and not have money. I do not want to be in a pickle. Do not be a pickle. I just don't want to be in a pickle. Yeah. He said triggered. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. All of our disability policies, Mitchell. <laughs> they need disability. Are you calling me d disabled? <laughs> no. Uh, That's it awesome. is that is funny too, isn't it? That's the awesome. triggering that goes on now. Triggered, triggered, and Mitchell, this one's for you too. That's funny. All right, moving on. We're going to talk about Alabama is the only state in the union 
that would probably, I could probably say, collects its property taxes for the county and state in arrears, meaning going back, while the municipalities collect in advance, which causes a ton of confusion for home buyers in Alabama. Yes. Yeah, the, and, and, and this is part of the stuff on the estimates and the cash to close that we don't really address up front. We don't put it in there. We put estimates of what is going to collect. It's always a little bit different, um, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. But uh, Hey, so, Jennifer. So on, on the credits and the debits, so we're going to have a credit for the county taxes right. from the seller to the buyer. Yep, so they'll pay them all. And then the buyer is giving money to the seller for the city portion. Why is that? Because they've already been paid. They're looking forward, right? Yes. And and one of the, the issues that crop, crops up, you know, uh, that's wrong, what's this? Well, yeah. oh, Long live stream. I, I, I could work on it though. He's talking about chin fat? I could work on it maybe. That's Smitherman for you. Uh, no, but anyway, uh, talking about the taxes and the city taxes and all that, the when you're paying those in advance, Folks get confused because now they're saying, well, I have to pay them all. Well, that, that person's already paid the city portion, right? But now you got to make sure that they all get paid in the fall, but, and you will not be held liable for any of the... If you're the seller and you give that credit, you go, oh my gosh, my name's still on the tax roll. Don't worry. You have that settlement statement that will cover you completely yeah. when they come due. And then if they're non-homestead, then there's a whole other ball of wax that we got to deal with. That's exciting, isn't it? Absolutely, and forgetting. That's right. The forgetfulness. I mean, I've had people in tears before going, because they are not very nice about it when you try to go back and do it. Right. Now, one thing I was going to ask you, you know, that we, I see all the time, is when I am see my clients comparing mortgage loan officers, giving them good faith estimates, and one of the biggest culprits is tax and insurance, like these property taxes, that you got to make sure the same number for taxes and insurance is used when you're comparing the quote you're getting from your loan officers, correct? Yeah, it's an it's a important deal. If you're only looking at monthly payment, then... Um, no, which most payment, people are. Let's yeah, just be yeah, real. A lot of people are just looking at monthly payment and interest rate. I can make your monthly payment look less if my insurance and my property taxes estimate is much lower than the next guy. So that's something to just pay attention to and watch. Uh, yeah, and make and, sure those and, numbers are the same compared to apples to apples. And one thing to remember, too, is not all municipalities are collecting tax either, right? I mean, not every city collects a... And they're just different know, rates. Yeah. Different rates. And, uh, you know, if, you know, we, we don't do a lot of uh, marketing directly to our stuff. But if you ever go to our website, megagents.com, there's an area on there uh, about Alabama property tax explained that I, that I, you know, I wrote the content or... I, I got it from sources, uh, from state sources. So, I mean, obviously, there's only so many ways you can write the law. Right. Um, but the other thing is, too, we find a lot of, uh, if, let's talk about one situation that does come up often. A lot of these younger folks are buying houses owned by old people that were exempt on taxes. So what is the, what does the bank do when the person's exempt? Do they not have to have taxes uh, escrowed? Yeah, typically we can, it, it sometimes depends on the time of year, but We'll probably get an estimate of what the taxes will be and collect those. Go ahead and collect them. Yeah. What happens with the excess that, that may be there? Well, well, we'll collect them in their monthly payment. Obviously, there won't be anything due at closing, but we'll collect them in the monthly payment. So when oh, you'll move it forward. So when it comes due, they're, they're paying it every month, and we'll collect it in the escrow account. So when it comes due, we'll have the money there to pay it. Well, you know, another one we see is disabled and blind. If you're blind, disabled, there's some things there. So if you got family members that are on... Uh, it generally has to be a permanent disability, obviously, uh, you know, uh, to end up applying for that exemption. They don't want somebody with a broken hangnail. That doesn't make sense. With a hangnail. Or if you can have broken, a broken hangnail. That'd be even worse. You go see Josh Brisman if you got a broken hangnail. Yeah. He'll somehow figure a way to get you some money. something went wrong there. We're just waiting for the billboards, Josh. We need billboards here to man work with Shannara. That's right. I mean... Uh, and, and Slocum, right? Um, anyway, so yeah, so and and that's where they, you know, are talking about just finish up on taxes. That in Alabama, a lot of our school money goes to. So you're going to find in your municipalities that have good schools, they tend to be the ones that the also have taxes. Yeah. taxes. Uh, so serious. Listen, he said serious injuries on. We me. want uh, we want everybody to to enjoy this weekend and take care of of your brackets. I know there's going to be a lot of heartbreak and a lot of uh, discontent, but 
Yeah. Uh, it is March Madness, and uh, Alabama. That's could, exciting. Hey, I'm an Auburn guy, but Alabama could be another one. If, if what's his name? What's it? Uh, Collins Sexton. Yeah, Sexton I Collins. I mean, that guy gets hot. Yeah. He, he can throw forty in the bucket quick. Yeah. Uh, It'll be a fun weekend. Hope everybody enjoys it. There's Ralph Parker from the old KW days. Hope he's doing well. Yes. Ralph's a good guy. Um, anyway, well, hope everybody. Uh oh, Brisman. Huh? I don't. I, I don't know how to translate that. Do you? I think it says roll tide. I, 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 is that uh, <laughs> Brisman? Come on now. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what to say. He's got yeah. me speechless. Hope everybody has a great week, and we'll see, see you, next, you week. next week, four o'clock uh, here on the Happy Hour. Thank you, guys. See you then. Bye. Oh yeah, go cats, Jennifer. That's my neighbor too. Uh oh, roll Rolling tide. tide. Man, rolling tide. Is, is there an Auburn person out here? No. Nope. Everybody in my sphere. It is, must be. It must be a slow week this week. Huh? Must be a lot of people out of town. They, a lot of people distracted. Yeah, by they, the they weren't here. Tournament. They weren't here. Yeah, they're not watching. Uh, that's right. We, we, we still love you guys, though. Yes, especially the cats. I mean, the, that's the thing. The cats have the talent to go all the way. That's true. All right, see you that's guys. True. See. You.